This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 69, Stuck in the Middle. This week's manga... Udon Entertainment has a title coming out that I'm really interested in. Manga Classics Pride and Prejudice is a faithful adaptation of the novel. This adaptation is being done by Udon and isn't just a license. I've read the preview chapter and I'm really looking forward to it. Viz has two Jose titles coming out through their Shoujo Beat line that I thought I would be interested in, but after reading the official descriptions, I'm not so sure. Black Rose Alice is another vampire title that has the supernatural lead lauding power over the human girl. No thanks. Spell of Desire has gotten at least one positive review, but I'll reserve my own judgment. In the meantime, Vertical has Knights of Sidonia Volume 10 and What Did You Eat Yesterday Volume 3 that I'm looking forward to for sure. In the news, two weeks ago, Jigaka Khan announced that Monthly Iki would be shutting down in September. They have since announced the fate of the titles currently running in the magazine. Of the titles that would be of interest, After School Charisma will end in the November issue. King Yo Used Books and Sunny will run until November and then will be published in compiled volumes. Doro Hedoro will continue serialization in another unnamed Chikaku Khan magazine. Iki's web arm, Web Ikipara Comic, will also end. It's good to see most of these titles will be able to find some kind of closure. At least Doro Hidoro gets to keep going. Publisher Mag Garden has announced one of its magazines is ending. Monthly Comic Blade will end in September as well. Its titles will be moving online to the magazine's website and will be available to read for free. Also moving online is Comic Avaris, which will be available as an online magazine and will update twice a month. Then starting in September is a new print magazine, Comic Garden, that will include new titles such as Elemental Gallade and titles from the Beat website. Mag Garden is a company that U.S. manga publishers don't seem to tap that much, but a lot of their titles get anime adaptations at Crunchyroll streams. They sound like a company that would be good for the Crunchyroll manga model, with so many of their titles moving online. The September issue of Shueisha's Psycho Jump magazine announced a new Naruto spin-off manga. Uchiha Sasuke no Shuringan Den, Sasuke Uchiha's Shuringan Legend, will start in the November issue out in October. It will be a more humorous take on the super serious Sasuke and will be drawn in SD form, much like the previous spin-off, Rock Lee and His Ninja Pals, which ended in July. I still don't get why Viz hasn't licensed Rock Lee, and if they don't license Sasuke, there is something wrong in Denmark. They just scream for the kids' imprint Perfect Square. Why, Viz? Why? Hiromu Arakawa currently has two titles running in Japan. Silver Spoon runs in Shogakukan's Shonen Sunday magazine and... The historic legend of Arslan runs in Kadansha's Besatsu Shonen magazine. Serialization of both titles is being slowed due to the declining health of a relative, and she wants to give them extra support. Crunchyroll has been running chapters of Arslan, and Kadansha will release the first compiled volume this month. Silver Spoon has yet to be licensed, most likely because of its content. It's not too violent or mature. It's about agriculture and farming. Viz who would get first shot at the title, doesn't seem to want to take a chance, even with Arakawa's name recognition. That's such a shame. I loved her one-shot Noble Farmer that J-Manga released before it was shut down. The latest volume of Bleach was delayed for a month, for reasons you wouldn't really suspect. Volume 64 was due out August 4th, but the publisher Shueisha pushed it back a month due to not having enough copies printed. Seriously? I can't believe the series is getting the attention it has, and really find it unbelievable that it would be delayed to make even more available. It boggles the mind. The Top 10 Department At VizManga.com, Viz Select Titles Do It Again, charting with their debuts. For the week of July 29th, 2014, there is a new top title, Viz Select Chibi Vampire Volume 10 debuts at number 1. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3 does a double tap with Volume 7 debuting at number 2 and Volume 8 right behind at number 3. 
Naruto Volume 66 moves back two spots to number four, while Rosario Vampire Season 1 Volume 1 returns at number five. Nisekoi Volume 8 also returns at number six, while Fate's Day Night Volume 6 debuts at number seven. Dean Angel Volume 10 debuts at number eight. Dead Man Wonderland Volume 3 debuts at number nine. And Trinity Blood Volume 3 debuts at number ten. I don't know what Viz thinks, but I think their select line is doing pretty well. New titles always make the top 10. Chibi Vampire is really raking it up with its new volumes almost always debuting at number one. Dean Angel, Fate Stay Night, and Trinity Blood have become pretty reliable with their hitting the chart as well. Despite the problems Tokyo Pop had, they did know how to pick some good titles. Over at the New York Times bestseller list, Yen Press presses their siege on the list to take over six of the 10 spots. For the week ending August 2nd, 2014, there is finally a change at the top. Black Butler Volume 17 moves up two spots to take number one. Soul Eater Knot Volume 3 skips its way up five spots to take number two and is followed by Blood Lad Volume 5 debuting at number three. Soul Eater Volume 21 moves up two to number four, pushing Attack on Titan Volume 1 back one to number five. Naruto Volume 66, the previous top title, falls five spots to number six, as Omamori Himari Volume 12 debuts at number seven. No matter how I look at it, it's you guys' fault I'm not popular Volume 4 moves up one to number eight, Attack on Titan Volume 3 returns at number nine, and Attack on Titan No Regrets Volume 1 falls the most, nine spots, to end the list at number 10. Wow, after weeks of only having one or two titles on the list, Yen Press has shown it can still dominate when it wants to, and apparently it really wants to. As well as several titles from last week returning, Yen added a few new ones. Attack on Titan isn't letting go, though, as early volumes continue to rotate on and off the list, except for the first volume, which has just hit 60 weeks on the chart. Stuck in the Middle this year, there's only a short two-week break between San Diego Comic-Con and Otakon. If you're a small publisher like Seven Seas that doesn't get the attention of a panel at either event, then announcing your titles in the lull in between is a surefire way of getting the spotlight. And they did just that. In total, they announced five new titles, though three are from the same franchise. Can you guess which one? As has become their want, Seven Seas announced two of their new titles on Twitter. The first is Sir Vamp. It is serialized in Media Factory's monthly comic Gene. It follows first-year high school student Mahiru Shirota, who finds a black cat named Kuro. Kuro is no ordinary stray cat. He is a Sir Vamp, a servant vampire. Now, Mahiru, who likes things simple and uncomplicated, ends up getting tangled up in a conflict between vampires. I like the sound of this series, even though it has vampires. They aren't preying on women. The art cover is cute and it has a cat, so I'm going to want to check this one out. There are currently six volumes available, and the first volume from Seven Seas is scheduled for March 2015. Twelve Beast is the newest series from Okayado, the creator of Seven Seas' monster hit, pun intended, Monster Masume. This one is about Eita Toga a boy who lives a quiet life of school and video games, but is also descended from ninjas. One day, a girl with wings and talons appear from another world, and Eita is drawn into an epic adventure. Seven Seas getting this title is a real no-brainer. With how successful Monster Musume has been, how could they pass up a title by the same creator featuring more monster girls? It is serialized in Dragon Age, and Katakawa released the first volume back in November. Seven Seas plans to release their first volume in April 2015. Earlier this week, Seven Seas confirmed three new titles in, can you guess? That's right, three new Alice in the Country of Clover manga will be coming out from the publisher. Alice in the Country of Clover, Lizard Aid, focuses on the romance between Alice and Grey Ringmark, a former assassin and assistant to Nightmare. March Hare's Revolution is another take that gets Alice and Elliot together. This must be a popular pairing. There are, what, three to four of these already? Twin Lover puts Alice with the twins Tweedledee and Tweedledum, a pairing I still can't see. All three of these are one-and-done titles. 
Lizard Aid is scheduled for release in January 2015, March Hare's Revolution in April 2015, and Twin Lover in May 2015. I'm not familiar with the Country of Clover characters, so I can't say if I think any of them are good matches, but I will admit to liking the Alice and Elliot pairing, so I guess one more wouldn't hurt. What do you think of Seven Seas Entertainment announcements? Are you looking forward to any of them? Any of them a surprise to you or not? Leave a comment. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at manga xanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.